All right. Hello, hello everyone. So my name is Yuzhe, and actually the uh, the authors of this paper cannot uh, make it to the conference, so I will be present presents for them. Yeah. So the the paper I'm going to talk about is detecting illicit food factories from chemical declaration data with self graph aware self supervised contrasted anomaly ranking. So as as the uh, title says, uh, this work is mainly focused on uh, the food sa food safety issues. So we all know that uh, we have lots of chem chemicals that will be uh, included in our food. So the question is, uh, are those uh, are those uh, chemicals are are legal, are illicit or illicit? So uh, we're trying to figure it out uh, from their declaration records. So there are lots of kind of kind. Uh, lots of kind of ha chemical hazards in the food safety and also uh, comes with lots of like FDA regulations so people get lots of attention on the food safety issues. And obviously there's a lot of challenging when we are trying to like uh, detecting whether a, a uh, food factories is listed or not. So there are a couple of challenges we have. So for example, we'll have limited funding and we'll have limited uh, manpower so that we can not like do lots of manual inspection and we also obviously we we won't have lots of like label data to help us to build a effective machine learning models to do the detection process so it's hopefully we would like to uh involve some ai based system that help us to like render the most suspicious uh, factories so that we could uh do the manual inspection yeah, so so the AI stored here in in the whole loop will be like uh, the AI will like uh, generate a a list of rankings so that uh, the physical inspection can be evolved after uh, those AI identify factories. All right, so let's take a look at the chemical declaration data. So we actually incorporate uh, collaborate with some local authorities. They will have their digital uh, declarations and their on site inspect inspection results. So in total, we will have 149 inspected food factories and 36 of them were illicit. And we'll have like around uh, 5,000 unique chemicals and and the uh, declaration records involved the chemical names, price, ways, and quantity, et cetera. Yeah. And here we present the data distributions of our data. So we will have like the data across from 2020 to 2022. And the figures on the uh, on the left will be the quantities of trades and the, the red bars over the, on the right will show the like the anomaly rate for each declaration record. And it ranges from like 50% uh, to 25%. All right, so here when it comes to like the challenges of detecting illicit food factories, there are like four major challenges. So the first one will have like a really lack of uh, label data and the chemicals uh, declared can be like within a large range and there's complicated and noisy data. And also there could be some subtle illicit, uh, illicit evidence. And here we would like to like present an initial experiment results by showing that uh, during the traditional supervised detection may lead to a really poor performance. So you can see that uh, we actually run a, a supervised model like random forest or MLP XGBoost, something like that. And we present the supervised detection results here. So as you can see that uh, when the training data is, is low, the, the F1 score or the uh, the AUC is not actually satisfactory. So, uh, yeah, the, and the reason is probably, like I mentioned, limited factories and the class imbalance issues. So in, in that case, you can imagine that building a traditional supervised model may not always work. All right, so here it brings us to the research goal of this paper is that we want to uh, make a unsupervised detection model. So given each food factories and each associate with a set of declaration uh, chemicals, and we want to uh, detect it in a, a unsupervised way. So in that case, we will, uh, we are not using the uh, labels of each uh, food factories, but instead we're only training on those uh, uh, normal factories, but we would like to see if there's some like anomaly behaviors according to the uh, illicit and illicit factories. Yeah. 
Okay, so here we uh, present the the model for, for detecting uh, illicit food factories. So the method is called graph aware self supervised contrasted anomaly ranking method, and the major uh, component is uh, three components. So the first one on the top is the graph auto encoder module, and the second is the factor uh, factory representation learning, and the last one is self supervised contrasted learning. So in, in the first phrase in the graph uh, autoencoder part, we will build a factory and chemical bipartite graph. So uh, on the left, you can see that there are some nodes uh, starting with U is the factory and the nodes starting with V denotes the uh, chem chemicals accordingly. And we will use a, a graph auto uh, graph auto encoder, uh, which involves a GCN encoder and a, a in the product decoder to like uh, reconstruct the original graph. And in in that phrase, we will uh, use the uh, graph encoding laws to like learn the representation for each node. And afterwards, we will have a sequence of uh, chemical sequence. Uh, declared by a specific factories, and we will use a GRU layer to like capture the sequential behavior of these uh, uh, these chemicals. And finally, we will in introduce a uh, self-supervised contrasted learning scheme to like uh, like identify the normality of the representation. So uh, we'll be introducing the components individually, and here the graph autoencoder. Uh, it's like a really standard uh, graph graph uh, autoencoder process. So we will have a uh, factory and chemical bipartite graph went through the uh, GCN encoder and use a uh, inner product decoder to reconstruct the original graph. All right, and the second one is the factory representation learning, and it utilizes a GRU layer to like capture the uh, sequential behavior of uh, of the declare sequence and the motivation behind it is that the, the sequential declaration chemically by a full factory may uh, yield some clues that could difference between the illicit and illicit operations. All right. And the la last one, I think, which is the most uh, important component in, in this method is the self-supervised contrasted learning part. So here we recall that uh, our task is to do a, a one class classification. So uh, so basically we're trying to like uh, calculate a score for a instance being normal or anomaly. So in here we use, uh, we refer to a normality dependent assumption is that uh, so, for example, you were given a representation Z1, and and here the normality assumption is that, for example, we uh, randomly assign indices, uh, for example, here is 4, so we can uh, divide the vector into uh, sub, sub vectors. So we will have 1, 2, 3, and 4 to 7, we will have a, a, a vectors complement each other. And the assumption here is that if a data is normal and the uh, uh, and the subset of the variables in the feature vector should be related to the rest of the variables. So we will hopefully we will uh, expect the the uh, representation on on the top will be similar to the representation in in the lower side. So we will uh, adopt a contrasted learning framework, which uh, is a standard uh, info NCE loss to uh, do the contrasted loss between. Uh, these uh, embeddings, the, the Q embed, P, P embeddings and the Q embeddings. Uh, yeah. And so for the final objective function, we will have the graph autoencoder loss and the self uh, supervised contrasted loss uh, optimized jointly. And at the testing phase, we will use the uh, contrasted loss uh, proposed here as the anomaly score. Right, so here we present the evaluation questions. So basically we are trying to compare our proposed uh, graph car model uh, with other unsupervised anomaly detection method. And also we will conduct experiments uh, regarding to the data size and the label noise. And finally we'll do the ablation study. Right, and the data set, uh, the data set setting is, uh, is that, oh, Given that we will have, we don't have like too much uh, example for training this data. So we actually uh, like do some kind of augmentation to expand the uh, factory declaration for a quarter as an instance. So we will have like 
uh, 10, we will have like a 10 seasons quarter. So we will uh, result in total like one, uh, uh, 1,000 instance and 200 of, 206 of the are illicit. All right, and here is the main result. So from the uh, result, we can see that we compare with uh, like two types of model, including unsupervised outlier detection and one class classification classification and the result shows that our our, our method is uh outperform other super uh standard say our method in terms of different uh training label data and all metrics okay so and and the other one we also uh, presents the robustness analysis to show that uh our our presents method is actually robust to the label noise. So here we what we uh, actually do is that we include some illicit uh, illicit transaction into our training data. So recall that our training process only uh, done on those uh, clean data. However, we in, uh, randomly include like five percent or ten percent of illicit data into this, this whole training process, and want, we want to see that whether it affects the performance. And as you can see that uh, some uh, baseline methods such as uh, the, the two, two this in the, this table are like more effective, will be more affected by the label noise. However, our detection method is uh, to some extent uh, robust to those noise. All right, and fi finally, we we'll also uh, conduct the ablation study to uh, like validate all the components in our model and like I, as you can see that removing each component will lead to a performance drop. So uh, uh, it verifies the design choice of our model. And finally, we uh, also collaborate with some local uh, authorities uh, to deploy our model in, into a system. So for example, you will have, a, we will have a website and we, they will uh, input a list of factories and we will output a, uh, rank, rank this according to the anomaly score and so that they can perform manual inspection. All right, and it brings to the summary of this paper, we, pre we propose the graph card and unsupervised method for identify illicit food factories. And our proposed method is uh, can deal with vast chemical data and robustness to the label noise. And it also uh, perform, outperforms the uh, previous uh, unsupervised detection method. And it also uh, has a deploy system in our, with uh, collaborate with our local authorities. And yeah, that's all I got for today. And I'm happy to take questions, but as I say, I'm not the authors uh, of this paper, so I'll answer it as much as I can.